Now, a double dose of economic downers today. The Case Shiller, the S&P Case Shiller home price index falling, well, 0.8% in October. That's a much deeper decline than Wall Street analysts had expected. Also, U.S. consumers, as Ellen was reporting, losing confidence in December. Another surprise. That's the conference board's numbers finding Americans are still worried about a difficult job market in 2011. In spite of all this, my next guest is quite optimistic as we head into 2011. Jerry Jasinowski is the former president of the Manufacturing Institute and also the former president of the National Association of Manufacturers. Jerry, good to have you with us on Bloomberg. And why so upbeat about the prospects for the U.S. economy? Well, I think there's a lot of good numbers out there that uh, we didn't see today, but we have been seeing. I think if you start with manufacturing, we've had the most amazing comeback in manufacturing in recent uh, business cycle history. Uh, manufacturing's grown three times faster than GDP as it's exported more, it's cut its cost, it's got new products, it's uh, selling all around the world, and it's got an enormous amount of cash that it intends to spend uh, either on capital spending, on jobs, and on mergers and acquisitions uh, in 2011. So that's number one. I think the consumer's in a more robust shape, although I wouldn't say he's really uh, awfully uh, 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 robust in the sense that he's still got the unemployment facing him. But, you know, they were out there shopping, and we've seen some good numbers uh, in the consumer space. I think that the GDP numbers have now been revised up. And we're looking at most economists suggesting, and I would agree with that, that we're looking at GDP of over 3% in 2011. So at a certain point, you begin to get a kind of a virtuous cycle. And that's all backed up by these tax cuts that have been uh, extended now. And QE2 is a very powerful floor. Uh, with respect to the financial area and, and the uh, market. So there's a, a lot of good factors out there. Jerry Jasinowski, uh, you mentioned exports uh, just a moment ago, and I want to get your thoughts on the U.S. dollar. As someone that understands how the manufacturing industry works in the United States, it, that may translate into greater profits because of the falling dollar, viewed overseas as a, a strength uh, for U.S. makers. But do U.S. corporations really rely on a lower dollar, or do they just try to compete head-to-head -head based on the actual product? Uh, that's a good question, and they try to compete head-to-head -head on the actual product, and they tend to hedge with respect to the dollar movements. We've had some help because the dollar's been going uh, lower in recent months, Pim, as you know, uh, and that has helped. But for the most part, uh, they try to go head-to-head, -head, and manufacturers now are so competitive, generally speaking, with respect to Europe and many other parts of the world, uh, that they're taking market share in, in many cases for a lot of products. Jerry, you've also mentioned the consumer, and some reports indicate that the consumer is spending, but they're not using credit cards. They're not using borrowed money. What they're doing is they're using either debit cards or cash. Is that a good trend? You know, I, I think it shows that the consumer is a bit iffy. Uh, he's obviously not uh, willing to bet the family farm on uh, the current economic situation because many of them have not seen, uh, you know, some of the good things that I'm speaking about here. But on balance, they're spending, and they're spending more than we expected. And I think that as they see the economy continue to improve, uh, they see the stock market, which is perhaps uh, maybe a little overvalued, but nevertheless will have a good run in 2011. I think their mood will continue to pick up uh, along the way. What about a payroll tax holiday? Do you think that that's needed next year? Well, you know, I think that uh, this bipartisan tax agreement that's been put together, including a payroll tax uh, holiday, has some, it's, a, it's really a second stimulus program, Pim. A lot of people don't realize it. They think it was simply the extension of the Bush tax cuts. It was much more. And the payroll tax holiday is going to have a powerful impact on uh, creating jobs, in my opinion. All right. We're going to continue the conversation. We've got more ahead with Jerry Jasinowski. Plus, it's time to sell the house. An investor with a proven track record explains why she's getting out of the real estate op investments and pouring her money into the stock market. And later on, it's hush-hush on Wall Street bonuses. We'll give you the details. That's next.
This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. We're talking about reasons perhaps to be optimistic for business in 2010. My guest is Jerry Jasanowski. He is the former president of the Manufacturing Institute and also former president of the National Association of Manufacturers. Uh, Jerry, you know, one of the things that I'm sure you've heard many times over the past several years is we don't make anything in the United States. As someone that knows a lot about what's going on in the manufacturing sector, can you dispel that myth or is indeed that accurate? No, it's not. It's not accurate at all. I think that uh, we now have uh, these global manufacturing companies, which make uh, everything you can imagine, from uh, all kinds of health uh, care, computer, transportation. Uh, you name it, we make it, uh, and we make it here, and we make it all around the world. I think the reason, Pim, that people suggest that is because it's not all made here, uh, and a lot of it is made abroad. It's made for sale abroad. And so you have this uh, massive uh, increase in investment in China, in Brazil, and other parts of the world. But it uh, does bring profits and jobs back here. And in many cases, it creates jobs there. So we make things all over the world. And we are, I think, still the strongest manufacturing um, country in the world. The two next strongest are Germany and Japan, they're both strong manufacturing uh, countries. Uh, China is strong in certain areas, but it's principally the, the low uh, cost, the low price manufactured uh, goods. And at this point, they tend to rely on German and American and Japanese products to a great extent when it's a more advanced technology. So we're really very competitive. We, we make things all over the world. So, Jerry, should uh, people not be so concerned about many pundits who talk about the hollowing out of the manufacturing base of the United States? I mean, for example, President Obama talks about education and how he wants to put more money in behind education to rebuild the manufacturing base in the United States. Are those necessarily contradictory themes? No, not at all. And I think the hollowing out uh, theme is a good way to put it, Tim. We have not maintained, in all cases, our uh, intellectual, our technological advantages. And we have probably uh, not built, rebuilt enough in this country. And I think uh, the president has been stressing that. Members of Congress are. I think we should do that uh, at the same time we're expanding globally. So. I don't think in general we've put a high priority on manufacturing in this country. Uh, now that we've seen what they can do in terms of this recent recovery, I hope the President and Congress will continue to put a high priority on it, on everything from taxes to technology to education. So we're not as strong as we could be, but we're much stronger than the pundits and those who suggest we don't make anything in this country. Jerry, is there also a social component uh, to the situation having to do with manufacturing? I mean, whether the talent and whether the money goes to back, for example, high-level trade schools that would then lead to a larger engineering base in the United States, such as perhaps they have in Germany? Yeah, well, I think, again, you're right. You're spot on. Uh, we have tended in this country not to appreciate that manufacturing jobs are high-quality, high-paying jobs. Many of them pay uh, seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars a year and more, and we have looked toward, you know, finance and and Wall Street as the place where young people uh, should go following college. Well, there's another way to do it, and you have people get uh, a two-year degree that's a technological uh, or tech technical degree that sets them up to do manufacturing, and that's a terrific growth path for a, a huge number of people and more and more the president has put an emphasis on this many people are putting an emphasis on community colleges and technical schools that would increase our ability uh, to have the kind of technical help we need i think we still don't have nearly enough engineers in this country i've uh, i feel that's very important and we've got to put a priority on that it's a little bit still a social issue because uh, we tend to think that the arts and finance is uh, still a little uh, more glamorous. And that's odd, isn't it? I mean, there's a certain irony when you think of so many of the consumer technology products and, and companies are based in California and have created whole new areas of manufacturing. Is it possible that engineering will be cool at one point? 
<laughs> I think it is cool already. And obviously, you're terribly uh, up to date on all of this. We really have this situation where Apple and Google and all of these high tech manufacturing firms, certainly Apple is very much that, uh, show you uh, what we can do. And you see it in many other areas, too. I think it's become cool. Uh, already, but it hasn't become cool in large enough numbers, and uh, that's the issue. We've got to have a, a greater number of people going to technical schools and more engineers uh, uh, graduated so that we can uh, strengthen our manufacturing base from what it is. But again, I would stress, we are not a second-class manufacturing uh, country at this point. We are first class. We've shown that in the lat uh, latest recession. Uh, and, you know, the, the uh, companies you follow there on the market, whether or not it's Caterpillar or uh, John Deere or even your report on General Motors showing the comeback in General Motors are all examples of uh, the strength of American manufacturing, its resiliency, its innovation. So I think we're in good shape. But we could do better, and we have to do better. Jerry, We've last, do better. Qu last question for you, Jerry. I mean, you mentioned GM. I'm just wondering, could we ever get you into a General Motors Volt, you know, the electric automobile they're making? <laughs> well, I think it's worth a try. I mean, uh, uh, I think it's worth a try, and I should certainly take a look at it. I'm not, I'm not going to dismiss it, that's for sure. All right, I hope. did want to say in closing that the manufacturing uh, priority is very important for jobs, as you know. We've created uh, quite a few jobs in this recovery, right. but not enough. Got to leave it there. Jerry Jasinowski, thank you for joining us. Coming up, should today's falling housing prices be telling you something? We're going to talk to someone who's been selling real estate.